Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to finally talk about Palantir. I haven't done a Palantir video in a very long time and I realized today that this stock hasn't gone anywhere in the last six months. And maybe this is a good time to do a more deep dive into uh, if this stock is a buy now, uh, if this is a hold, uh, what I think about the stock and what are my expectations for the future. Because I mean, six months being in the same place, that's kind of a lot. So if we were bullish on the stock before, then logically we should be uber bullish on the stock now. But as usually, there's a lot of context to this story. So please make sure you like the video, you subscribe to the channel and let's get going. So if we zoom out of the Palantir chart, it's a very, very interesting chart. Uh, they DPO'd somewhere here. Uh, then the price went to the moon. I don't understand what kind of valuations, tables, or whatever the people were using to get a fair value of $44 for the stock. Beats me what happened there. But the stock crashed down to $6 um, or you know, $6 to $8, which did not make any sense. So at this point, the stock market didn't know uh, what to make of uh, Palantir, if it was a consultancy, uh, if they're either going to survive because they were, you remember, an unprofitable company, but they weren't losing money, but somehow they were being almost priced for bankruptcy and, and uh, no growth. So that didn't make any sense. Okay. And then somehow the market woke up. Uh, I, by the way, managed to, th these arrows are when I was buying the stock and my average is eight point something. It's a pretty low average in the Palantir community and I'm very, very happy with it. And then ChatGPT came along. And I also remember that in this uh, period, Palantir was very bad at explaining what they do. They were very bad at sales. Uh, every metric in the company was getting worse. Like you really had to be a believer uh, in the company to be buying at that time and to be holding at that time. And to be honest, that was one of the most fun for me as, as a content creator covering Palantir. Uh, because I think that, you know, the biggest need for us content creator is, uh, is when the story is completely misunderstood and you need to, you know, help explain the product and, you know, help explain the stock. And then ChatGPT came out and the market realized, wow, this company is not going to go bankrupt. This company is a good company. And then they basically re-rated the company. We jumped up, uh, we doubled the stock, and then we have been in that range ever since. But the company since then has become gap profitable. They are eligible for the S&P 500. They are re-accelerating their growth. They found a new go-to-market strategy. They are insanely good at explaining uh, what their product does. Let me just show you a video here. Uh, that is from the recent event. It's a very fast video. I just want to make sure that it's at the correct speed. It is. Yeah. So this is what the customers say about Palantir. So remember a year ago, Palantir was really bad at explaining what they did. And now they have these kind of videos from their customers. The excitement and energy around AIP is unlike anything I've seen. Everybody wanted a generative AI strategy and nobody had a product and that's our time. With Foundry, we were able to influence the outcome of the game while it was being played from the field, from the operators who actually are playing the game. We've been on a boot camp with the Palantir team for two days and a lot of speed to value right there. You know, getting to work with some of the best engineers, typically we get a lot of sales folks from software in our companies working with us. And the reason why we are here for the bootcamp as well. Palantir across different use cases has accelerated, not only accelerated the journey, but it also enabled clients to test out various prototypes of the use cases in a very safe, secure, and responsible manner. It wasn't the worst quintile getting to the average. Just what we saw immediately in terms of productivity and accuracy, I just, I've never seen something like that. I've never seen software that can take the knowledge base of our best operators and really institutionalize it. You can have an investor in your stock 
buy that stock at the 4th of July and the company won't even know about it until Thanksgiving. So we started talking to Palantir. This is the work that will forever change the care of our patients. This is the work that matters. And we're just so excited to be part of this. Such a well-made video, by the way. When I listen to it, I'm like, oh, let's go. So what a change this company has done. Like these are customers telling their experiences and it went from this black box, ununderstandable company into this very accessible, you know, you just go to their AIP bootcamp and you know, you, you basically within a few days you get value and you get to try out the use cases basically for free. And it's going really, really good for them. So there is zero question now about the product. The only question now is about their go-to-market strategy and what is going to happen with their growth in the future and with their margins. Uh, but because there so many questions have been answered, so Palantir is not the same opportunity that it was in 2022 and 2023. And to be honest, it has happened to a lot of stocks. I mean, Nvidia was a hundred dollars, Facebook was eighty dollars. Uh, you know, those prices are probably never coming back anymore. It was those opportunities. So there is probably not another chance to get Palantir at eight dollars. And if you have that uh, cost basis, you should feel very, very lucky with yourself. And I think Palantir, from this point on, is going to be like an Apple or, you know, like a Salesforce, I heard them uh, being compared to, where they are very stably growing 20 to 30% per year. And it's honestly quite boring, but as an investor, I really, really like this. So the big jump is done. And now we have this, you know, steady growth. And obviously a lot of people, I, I see you guys and I hear you on Twitter that you want this mooning uh, to happen, but it comes once in every 10 years. Um, and again, it's on all the stocks on the stock market, look at Tesla, it 10 X in, uh, 2020, and then it's been going sideways and down since then. So I am very, very happy if Palantir is going to do 20 to 30% uh, a year from now. So that should be your expectation. And if we moon, Hey, you know, like, thank you for that, but don't be expecting that. So. I thought it was time to look at the Palantir valuation and where do we stand uh, because the stock hasn't been going anywhere. And I'm very happy with my position, as I said. Um, I, I wasn't planning to add more, but if the price gets stupid enough, you know, I can, I can think to add more. So I wanted to see where would that level be and what I think about the stock. I wanted to show you a, uh, we, we can take this in a bit. So let's look at their growth. So they have guided for $2.222 billion. And I'm going to take the high end of, of their guidance. And I mean, it's basically, I've never seen guidance like this. It's like almost the very exact number. Uh, and 611 million adjusted cash flow from operations. Uh, this, by the way, is a margin of 27.5%. Uh, this is uh, the cash flow margin that they get. It's not the gap number because uh, this doesn't account for the stock based compensation that uh, they do. But I think at the stage that Palantir is in uh, currently, this is an okay number uh, to use. So, as you have been watching this channel, you know I have a uh, model that is available on my Patreon and that link is in the description box below. And currently there's not so much stuff on it. I'm planning to make it really cool and upload all my, um, the theories of my thesis for every company that I do uh, and downloadable models so you can like plug in your own assumptions. I never want to give you financial advice because that's not what I'm here for, but you know, you can use this table and put in your own assumptions and you can make your own decisions based on that. So this was a, my old Palantir valuation model. Let me decrease my face and increase the camera here if I can. Uh, let's grow this to 150%. So 
this year, from between 2022 to 2023, they're growing 17%. Um, and this is what I'm guessing, this is, this is what I'm projecting their income is going to be. And the question is that we can clearly see that they're re-accelerating on the revenue growth. Uh, this is something posted by Arnie Trezzi. I really like him. He's a good friend of mine. Um, you can see that we have been decelerating on the revenue and then uh, Q1 2023 and Q2, it turned around and we started going higher and higher. Now they gained it for 19%. And there is so much data I feel that is missing because we haven't really seen the effects of the AIP boot camps, which is their new uh, go-to-market strategy. We don't know what is their closing rate. We don't know if those how much those customers are paying. So I want to be more careful with my table and I put in 25% as a growth rate up to 2030 because I'm a very long-term investor. So I want to see my assumptions up to uh, 2030. So this is where you can disagree with me and maybe say that, hey Vince, it's, they will very easily grow uh, 30% or maybe 35% or you're, you can say, no, I... I think that they're growing 17% and even I'm happy if they grow 20%. So change that number. Uh, this is their adjusted operating margin uh, that I have here. And here I want to point out one thing uh, that this guidance here for the full year, I have it written up here, is a 27.5% uh, margin guidance. But if you look at Q4 2023, uh, this here, 188 million on 603 million is actually a 31 plus percent uh, operating uh, margin. So very likely this 25 number adjusted operating margin is off, actually. Uh, you can see here, I account for the dilution of the stock. And this also might be off because if they are buying back shares, then they can actually completely counteract the dilution. Uh, so keep in mind that this number also might be off. So I want to look at what the valuation of the stock is going to be in 2025 and in 2030 based on this uh, calculation. And I think I'm going to take away my face 100% so you can see this. So if we have the 25% margin, which I feel currently is very, very safe, and we account for the dilution, the share price in 2025, which is one year from now, uh, based on this calculation is going to be 18. If you count uh, that it's two years, because we're at the very beginning of 2024, and you, know, you count that it's at the end of 2025, and you want a 20% return, the stock price for you to make it a buy, it should be at 1283. So, just to translate that, if you would buy the stock at 1283 and the stock would go in two years to $18, you would have a, an annual return of 20 and 20%. Uh, if you want to hold the stock for the same assumptions, you can see uh, if they keep growing uh, 25%, they will come to 10 billion in income, 25% adjusted margin is 2.6 billion on that. And if you times that by a free cash flow multiple of 50, which also you can debate if that's the correct number or not, uh, then you will get a share price of 49% and you would have to buy the stock at 14.87 to have a 20% return every year up to 2030, which is a fantastic opportunity, okay? But I want to show you what would happen if you change this number to, uh, let's say, 27%. No, I changed it. Yeah, no, it changes everywhere. So you can see already that the price jumps to $20 and then all of a sudden 13.86 is a good buy price. And if you look up to 2030, uh, then 16.6 even is a good price for you to buy uh, Palantir at. So, and if you even change this and you say, but yeah, it's not at the end of 2025, but maybe at the beginning of the 2025, when the market is going to be pricing in this, you can change this to only discount one year. And then you also get that $16 is a very, very good uh, price for you. So the price is somewhere between 
13 to 16 dollars where you get a very nice return if you're able to hold this stock uh for um you know up to 2025 or up to uh 2030 now technically if you look at the chart there clearly seems to be a very big support at 14 dollars every time we go down to 14 dollars uh, the stock has bounced back and I think if the stock would come down to that point, it would be a very, very safe uh, place and a very, very fair price to enter Palantir. If the stock would go below that point and we would go down to 12 and 10, I might consider adding to my portfolio. But I did this video for those of you who still want to add Palantir. I wanted to give my uh, two cents on where the stock what I think about the stock and what I think about the future of the stock. The next earnings that is coming up is going to be one of the most uh, consequential earnings that we have had for Panther. I feel like I say it for every earnings, but they are going to guide for 2024. We're going to see how well AIP is working. We are going to see if AIP is, they're just delivering it for free and they're getting a lot of freebies who come and then they go home and it was free or, or we're going to see if they're actually uh, closing people and this significantly adds to the bottom line of Palantir and that earnings is in one month people so I'm going to be there I'm going to be watching this is a very exciting stock and if you are like me and you want to focus on a very few stocks what you can do with Palantir is if it's almost at your price is you can sell put options on it and that way you basically get paid for waiting uh, on the stock to come down on uh, to your price and uh, yeah it can be very nice I actually checked it today and the $14 uh, strike price one month out would pay you two and a half percent on your money for waiting to buy Palantir at the price that you want to uh, buy it. That's, that's pretty good. I would be very happy with that. So that was the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Make sure you're subscribed. If you want to support the channel, you can check out the Patreon. Thank you very much if you do. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.